love running. I love running. The number one problem that presents to podiatry offices in America is heel pain. And typically the most, uh, most common diagnosis up until recently that we would have given that heel pain uh, is plantar fasciitis. Uh, and this is an important discussion to have because about six or seven years ago, Dr. Harvey Lamont from Philadelphia, who is not only a podiatrist, he's a dermatopathologist, took 50 patients of his that did not benefit from uh, traditional uh, podiatric care. He actually operated on them for, for heel pain. And during that operation, he opened up the inner part of the heel where most people with, with plantar fascial pain will hurt. They'll typically hurt in this area through here. They'll typically be most painful when they first get out of bed in the morning. They'll have to walk around a little bit till their foot warms up and then they'll, then they'll be fine. Um, so Dr. Lamont took 50 of his patients that did not get better with the, the therapy he had offered and he, he opened their foot up, he took a piece of their plantar fascial ligament and looked at it under the microscope. And what he found was quite interesting. He didn't find inflammation as he suspected, he found dead tissue. So most folks who are reading the literature who are treating heel pain uh, are aware that the problem is no longer thought of as an inflammatory problem, but more likely to be representative of a s localized circulatory problem. In other words, um, how in the world would a person, especially some of the young people who developed this, get a piece of dead tissue in their heel when we can feel the pulses coming into their foot? Uh, the pulse behind the ankle is the tibialis posterior pulse. The pulse on the top of the foot is the dorsalis pedis pulse. These people will have plenty of blood flow coming into their foot, so it won't make sense then why they'll develop a piece of dead tissue until you consider one important feature, and that is this particular muscle here on the inner part of the foot is called the abductor hallucis, and it's called that because its intended function is to abduct the hallux, the hallux being the medical term for the big toe. In an ideal world, uh, when we're first born, this muscle, the abductor hallucis, is in perfect balance with the adductor hallucis, which attaches to the inside of the big toe and a little floating bone on the bottom of the first metatarsal called a sesamoid. However, in America, we, we do not appreciate this intricate balance between these two muscles. We put our children into footwear early on in life that takes away from their natural foot configuration and encourages the big toe to go over towards the second toe. What that does at the level of the foot here is it causes the abductor hallucis muscle to become a strangulating force on the blood supply coming into the medial heel and the blood supply leaving the medial heel. In other words, the rest of the foot will get nourished, but because this particular muscle, the abductor hallucis, partially cuts off blood supply, there's a localized area, generally in this vicinity, where people will de literally develop dead tissue or fasciosis. This is very easy for people to understand when you can show them the muscle that's responsible for the problem getting tight when you move their big toe into the position that most footwear holds it in. So I'm gonna demonstrate that on this foot here in just a moment. The abductor hallucis muscle is a triangular shaped muscle here that becomes a tendon here and attaches on the, on the big toe. So in an ideal world, that muscle would be short and strong and holding the toe where it belongs. We don't live in an ideal world. Most of us by the age five or six have already begun changing the natural shape of our big toe. And why this eventually develops into plantar fasciosis will be easily seen if you can see what the muscle is about to do as I move her big toe into shoe position. And by the way, as I mentioned, the blood supply coming in is right here tibialis posterior artery, but it's got to go under this muscle. Take a careful look at what this muscle does as I move her toe into shoe position. It's subtle, but if you could see right there, you can see that as we move her toe into taper and toe spring, which are the two design features that are built into the toe box of most shoes, including athletic shoes, her abductor hallucis muscle is going to pull tight 
against the blood supply coming into the foot as well as the venous blood supply going out of the foot. Correspondingly, it's subtle, but you can also see, as I reapproximate the big toe position, the abductor hallucis muscle goes from tight to pouching out. Once again, shoe position, strangulation, dead tissue. Natural foot position, opens up the muscle, lots of blood flow in and out of the foot. So, not so surprisingly, a lot of people who have a bunion will also develop plantar fasciosis. And not so surprisingly, as we reverse their bunion, we also many times cure their plantar fasciosis. Conventional therapy many times is to describe this as an inflammatory problem, offer anti-inflammatory medications, offer cortisone injections, um, offer custom orthotic devices, thinking that the tissues are pulling and getting inflamed. Um, and ultimately, unfortunately, many people will get an incision, they'll get a release of the plantar fascia ligament. So, a few important points to consider. This is no longer thought of as an inflammatory problem, it's thought of as a dead tissue problem. It does not respond um, well to custom orthotic devices uh, on a long-term basis. It also does not respond well to the thinking that you want to stretch your plantar fascia ligament. If you go online and read about this or go to many doctor's offices, they're going to try to get you to sleep with something that pulls, again, on the very same tissues that are already dying and becoming, becoming dead. So um, our approach to this is always help that individual achieve their natural foot position, which will deliver blood in and out. We get the person to begin challenging the tightness of the adductor hallucis. And we do that by reapproximating the great toe, doing soft tissue work on the inside of the first metatarsal, because when we get the adductor back out to length, the abductor will start getting short and strong again. And unfortunately, many times early on, that can be a cramping sensation, or the patient will oftentimes see little muscle twitches as that muscle gets short and, and gets back to doing its proper function. We also have noticed that when shoes have a lot of toe spring in them, it also directly pulls the tissues that are having a problem. So we recommend what's called the toe extensor stretch. We want that individual to stretch the top of their foot to gain length in their extensor group. Ironically, we stretch the toes in exactly the opposite direction from where a lot of the traditional recommendations uh, will hold a person. So we want a, a natural shoe that's flat from the heel to the ends of the toes. We want that shoe also to allow that individual to reapproximate their great toe position with a silicone toe separator. We oftentimes will use a metatarsal pad under the metatarsal arch to shorten the tissues here um, as opposed to lengthening and stretching them. We love to use heat. Heat brings in blood flow. We need blood flow to cure this problem. And occasionally we will also tape a person uh, to get them a little bit more active. Um, and we'll tape them in a position to support the foot temporarily as opposed to long-term uh, orthotic therapy. I love a running. I love running. I love a running. I love running. I love running.